presenter for the night. Okay. Uh, division tomorrow night. Good evening, I'm Jacob Stubb. <coughs> Here, just instead of on raw seconds, it's uh, percent 
uh, variability from the spec uh, motor, and you still see that U shape. Here's a list of the motors that I tested that were out of, out of the uh, spec. Um, all ten of these were out of the uh, were out of the twenty percent spec over because of that one point five second exception. Only five of those really were out of spec. And you can see there's even some motors were over three seconds in variability from desired. Now uh, <laughs> this flight here is not included in the data points. It was another error with the motors. I did uh, contact the manufacturer. This was a known issue with that particular lot. There was no ejection charge. Um, <laughs> however, I, that. I did get some important data out of this. As you I, and, um, you can see the velocity of the entire flight all the way down to the ground. Um, and you can see how, how the velocity kind of evens out to a terminal velocity. Um, but really, the main point of this is this table here. I can see uh, one second prior to the Apogee, it's traveling 10 feet per second. Uh, two seconds of that, between two seconds prior to and at Apogee, it's traveling travel 51 feet. So you can see that that variability, if you're looking at a precision altitude event, variability in a motor makes quite a big difference. Now, uh, just a table showing the effects of being before or after that desired delay. Before is going to cause obviously an early eject. Uh, the delay component burned too quickly, um, and the apogee is short of intended. If you're trying to get to 800 foot of altitude and you end up ejecting at 780 feet, you're obviously below it. Um, effect on duration: if you're deploying the parachute at 780 feet instead of 800 feet, the duration is obviously going to be shorter. And damage to the rocket: I had a couple flights in my data here where I was ejecting over 100 feet per second. And no, no fault to me, I just used the motor in the way it was spec and uh, I had some Kevlar shock cords uh, tear out of the rocket and um, quite a bit of damage. And then contrary to that, on late, de on late de uh, delay, it's late eject, too slow of burning. Uh, there's no effect on the altitude since if you're going for 800 feet and you go over the apogee and then back down some, it's not really affecting your apogee. Uh, Effect on duration is still reducing at the same amount. If you go over 800 feet and then you fall down to 700 feet when you eject, you, you're starting your, your slow descent with the parachute at 700 rather than 800. And damage to the rocket, as you can see in the previous picture, uh, it only takes six seconds to get to the ground. So that parachute, it, it really speeds up pretty fast. Now, as, I, uh, as was noted on the PowerPoint earlier, out of those seven motors, two of the motors were, were uh, tested in a larger quantity, one of those being a single use, one being a reload. And the, uh, these two represented right here. I wouldn't draw any factual data from this since there were other smaller samples in my data that uh, showed that uh, reloads were more variable. However, in this, the orange represents reloads and blue represents single use. You can see the reloads are much more consistent to the, um, to the desired delay. And the uh, uh, same use. And you can see the uh, standard deviation 10.7 on uh, single use of 5 on uh, reloads. Now, I did see in my research somewhere that uh, someone suggested that temp ambient temperature plays a role in the speed of the burning and delay component. This is a plot of the temperature. I see no correlation. And really, in summary, uh, this, this kind of amplifies the uh, objective that it's almost required if you're trying to dial in on altitude to be constantly looking at things like this because if you go down the road, you don't have this, you're not able to look at the altitude. And you go down the road, you're flying, you say, say you fly 700 feet, you're looking for 750, you think, okay, I'll reduce the mass, and then you end up getting 680 feet. Then you're going to think you did something wrong, and you're going to basically drive yourself nuts trying to add to go up. And um, I'll end up with there. Do you have any questions? Uh, uh, single use is kind of a black The motor is kind of a black box. You can get it, you use it. Yep. The reloads, do you see anything in reload process that correlated to uh, more consistency to some things working as well? It gives you kind of a unique opportunity to get, to get at pieces of the motor if you don't normally sit. Of the single use of the reloads I used across four different lots for each of those, uh, the reloads I could have uh, weighed the actual delay component. However, that's not really in the spirit of testing variability. I do know, I did check, however, on the lot.
was something that could telegraph that this is going to be a, a short run or a long one, you know, by, by examination somehow without it. Well, one, one uh, suggested way of doing that is to weigh the delay component on a reload and compare it. Now we're like, I didn't do that. Yeah, I'd be interested in that. It might be interesting for people to show up. Have you, have you experimented any with, with um, the delay, adjusting delay curves? Adjusting some curves? of these uh, were, did have adjustment. Some of them? <coughs> not, not the ones in the large quantities. Those okay. were giving adjustments. I was wondering, because it just was the question that, 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 that Chris asked, how do you drove the thought? Is getting an accurate way up in the field might be a little more challenging than taking a pair of calibers and measuring the length of the delay charge and then drilling to try to up with these and finding out what the burn rate is. And drilling and, and, and adjusting the length rather than waiting whether that would be. I guess maybe I think maybe I've answered my own questions as I go. Um, so. Well, the uh, the reloads that were that I used were in large. I mean, they are exactly the same size of I guess part there. Well, the length of the, length of the, the length of the, of the barrel is always going to be yes. Consistent. So, you, but you did measure. The it's length. completely filled okay. to the edges with. Well, well, yeah, actually, this, yeah, you, you have raised more questions than, uh, than you've answered, and that's a side of it. That's good because it keeps your research grants going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but seriously, yeah. certainly looking for ways to find out how, how to predict a long or a short burn would be useful. And if I, if I heard it correctly, you can actually measure the length of the delay charge before you. You can, however, it's it's basically all it's basically cut off by a machine. It, they are the same. So, so, so when you reload, reload they, are, the they are all the same. same. So the length of them is not what it's the speed of the burn. Anything. And lot lot numbers. Did you do any correlation with lot numbers? Yes. Uh, I all of these were uh, the, the reloads that I tested the mass points were out of four different lots, and there was no grouping of any particular mm -hmm. lot. Right. They're so, all mixed together. So, so, so there's a lot of a lot of uh, mystery in, yep. into what causes the variability of these things. Although one of your charts you had um, temperature, yeah, and uh, what happens with high temperatures they tended to, to be better, and then they cluster a little on the high side. And low temperatures they were worse. They were all over the place. The theory is that a high temperature will cause it, or the high ambient temperature will cause it to be greater, will to burn slower. However. Um, Really, the only data that I have on the high temperature is the is the, the pink marks, and those are still above the uh, the desired the, the labeled number, anyways. And then cold cold temperatures. This this is a common chart. Uh, have you done this before? Have you ever done this uh, research before? No. This is the first time you've done this kind of research. Give us a demonstration. No. no. Questions from the audience. Jacob, two questions. Um, the first question is, how does the way the motor is ignited influence the delay? Meaning that, could it be that the delay doesn't start immediately when the motor lights, or maybe a, a portion of the delay erodes because it's more of a flame to impact the delay? That's the first question. And the second question, is more important, is what would your suggestions be to tar teams in terms of to be more consistent? All right. Um, on the first question, a composite motor is, as you know, it's a core burner. Basically, you have an igniter all the way up the middle to near the top of the motor. The, uh, the tip of the igniter is touching the delay component and is also touching the propellant. And the delay component is ignited at the start of the flight. So the delay component is burning the entire time. That kind of answers. Well, my question was basically, is that um, is it possible that the ignition would erode more of the delay component initially mm -hmm. from one launch to another? I imagine it is possible. I don't see a way of and then your recommendations to tar teams for consistency? Um, well, I still haven't figured that out yet. My, my team was playing by this. <laughs> <laughs>
I think what he was getting at is, um, did you come up with a way to remove the variable of you and using your igniters? Meaning, from what I understand, like I said, uh, delay grain burns from ignition. So if the igniter is not all the way up in the motor, that it's going to delay when the delay grain ignites. So how did you account for that in your variables to remove that as an option? If it's not igniting immediately when the igniter burns, it's, it's, I would assume it's probably going to start burning once the uh, propellant right next to it starts burning. And so you don't think it's a variable? If it has propellant right next to it that's burning, I would imagine mm -hmm. that that time is a, is a split second. And Good we're point. looking at three seconds here. And we're looking at faster burning even. So mm -hmm. that would be assuming, that would say that you're uh, lighting the delay before you're lighting the propellant by three seconds. Hmm. Um, I just was wondering if you could comment if the large batch single use motors and the large batch reloads were produced by the same manufacturer. Can I say who it was? Were they? They were. Thank you. 